Hey everybody, it's Torrento again. We're doing the Recover Knock List mission now. May or may not split this one up into a few parts. Probably will just because um, I'm recording more than one of these at a time and scheduling them. And uh, I've played some more, uh, some more, more Mission Impossible 64 than I should subject myself to in one night. And there's some uh, annoying levels in this I don't feel like doing tonight. Um, Security hallway and sewage control in particular, I know are not going to be fun at all on Impossible. Uh, warehouse itself is, is one of the low lights of the game, so really not looking forward to that one. But let's do uh, Embassy Function. It's probably my favorite level in the game. Look at that nice natural uh, animation there. Everyone looks like they're on crystal meth. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. Former KGB Linex officer Alexander Golitsyn, now working black market intelligence under official cover, has abducted one of our top computer experts, IMF agent Candace Parker, and has stolen one half of the CIA NOC list she was carrying. Why was she carrying this? Cover agents in Eastern Europe. This list is divided into two encoded halves. The half Golitsyn has is useless without the other half, which is stored at CIA headquarters in Langley. Candace is now imprisoned in the Russian embassy in Prague, where they are trying to decode the list, probably believing she has the key to the code. We also know they have a powerful computer there and are probably using it to try to break the code. Special Agent Robert Barnes was deployed in disguise to free Candace and make it look like Golitsyn's fault. This is so as to discredit him with Moscow. However, we've heard nothing from Barnes since, and we suspect he's been caught. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to penetrate during tomorrow night's embassy function. Find Candace, copy the list. Sarah Davies over there having a and seizure. With Candace and Barnes to be still As alive. Always, should you or any of your IM force be caught or killed? As is everyone else on the plane. And I also notice the seat looks like it's hovering the there. Will self -destruct in five seconds. Planes are not made like this. So, at this point, we're getting into the plot of the first Mission Impossible movie. And the plot still makes relatively decent sense at this point. When you get to the Langley levels, unless you have seen the movie, you're going to be lost. Uh, you just will, because they don't explain, like, why you need both halves of the knock list, trying to clear your name and all this other stuff. It just kind of... And they also take some liberties, as you've seen, like Candace is a major character. There is no Candace in the movie, to my knowledge. Um, could not get the, didn't use the female lead from the movie. But they took some liberties, which I appreciate. They, they basically tried to make it into a game. You know, that's, like, I feel like that's the problem with game movies. Like, you know, the movie, the movie, the movie takes you on a minecart ride, right? Like, you're, you're stuck in the cart, whereas games are all about player agency. So uh, it's kind of hard to find things for the player to do. You know, it wouldn't be very interesting, even if you were James Bond, if you just, like, killed the bad guy and that was the end. So they have to find excuses for you to do other things. So the ocean, when they made this game, took some liberties with the plot to allow you to do this. I do like the detail. They give you these little dossiers before every mission that tell you about who's on your team and what they're doing and what they're good at. Unfortunately, not much of it ever matters very much in the game. Uh, every character plays their role, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, what they do, you know, it's not like they have special abilities to help you. It's all like scripted events and things that they do. Like, it doesn't matter that uh, Dieter Harmon here is an expert at, uh, you know, caviar or whatever. You know, you can't call in a caviar airstrike or anything with uh, with these guys on your team. And they also tell you about your equipment, which is useful. Um, I like that, that they tell you what you're supposed to do with some of this stuff. So we need to find a face maker, find a score, find nausea powder. 
We need to find a drink. We need to place smoke generators. We need to eliminate killer. We need to assume the ambassador's ID and we need to access the restricted area. All of these, of course, are easier said than done. Then the interesting thing about this level is that it is not necessarily what you'd call an action level. It's more of a talking level, I guess. So uh, a puzzle level, maybe. So I give kudos to the team. You know, they didn't just straight up make an action game. Like there's this kind of talking action level here in the middle. So the first thing we need to do is talk to these idiots because she has the face maker which I need but to get it from her I have to talk to her twice. I also do not want this guy to be around because if he sees me get it I fail the mission instantly. So what we're gonna do is talk to her, make sure he is out of sight, and get it. If someone sees you, basically Ethan says rats, someone seen us, a guard runs up, arrest you, and you're treated to a cutscene of you and Sarah being locked up and beaten in a, a basement with boxes that have Siberia written on them for some reason. So the smoke generators, yeah, just like that. Also, what is going on with my arms? Yeah, it's good I failed so you get to see this goofy cutscene. It's like, come over here in the middle so I can whack you in the back and make you fall down. Dude's facial expression never changes. Just stone cold. So let's try that again. Except this time we'll skip all this mess. Okay. For one thing, if I knew what the controls were, that wouldn't have happened to me. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to guess this guy is coming right here. So we're going to wait for him to go by and we're going to get this one. Roger. We'll use this opportunity to go talk to these idiots. You have to wait. Who knows how long for whatever reason. Alright, this guy should be coming here any minute. Great. You okay there, Ethan? Your arms look a little uncomfortable. Also, my pants have, like, no texture. They just, like, open that bad boy up and paint. Let's use that black fill texture. And we're done. All right. You can actually fail the mission if you spend too much time standing next to Sarah. Like, it doesn't matter if she's giving you the face maker or not if you because it's supposed to look suspicious or whatever so you'll fail and it's impossible so I have to assume that the guards have a little easier time seeing me so I'm just gonna be a little more careful next time this room however is full of people but you can just you know walk right up to the vents and no one cares Talking to these people yields Russian text, but I'm not sure if it's actual Russian or just like nonsense Russian that they just put up there for effect. If anybody watching speaks Russian, you could let me know. I'd appreciate it. Next, we're going to speak to our good friend Dieter Harmon. No relation. Look at that drink just slides across there. And then Ethan puts it in his pocket. The frick, man. I wish I had a jacket I could store a freaking floret drink in. So he's walking around with this poison drink in his like vest pocket here. A, it's gonna get clean. He's gonna give it to somebody later, so it's like it's gonna get cold. So what we need to do is get the ambassador to come downstairs so we can give him the drink, which makes him nauseous, which makes him run to the bathroom so we can punch him and change into it. And then we can use his identity to go past that guard up there and go to the Soviet area. Okay. 
So how do we get the guy to come downstairs by playing the national anthem of his home town? The Slabavas, Slabers, whatever. So you have to find the score because some idiot has walked off with it. No problem. Because I know where it's at. Now if you caught that text, which I skipped through, he mentioned that the woman in red is looking for me, and that's her right there. That is Schofield the Killer. Um, nothing is ever said at any point again before or after this mission who she is or why she is trying to kill you. It's just, uh, it's just kind of thrown in there. You don't even have to kill her if you're playing on the possible difficulty. You, you can and it's recommended because you're going to have to go to the bathroom anyway. Now, I can go in the bathroom right now and she will follow me. And I can attempt to knock her out or shoot her with a blowpipe. However, you have to be quick, and given how clunky this game is, I don't want to risk it. Because that gut purse she's carrying it has a concealed gun in it. And she'll, like, shoot you with her purse and you will die. And since this is a talking mission, pretty much all damage is a one-hit kill. Uh, the only weapon I have right now is the blowpipe, which I can walk around with and nothing happens. But it's like a one-hit kill, so i got to be careful. So now that I have the score, I'm going to give it to the piano player here. Which brings Dum Dum here down the stairs. You have to let him get it just the right place or otherwise he won't do right. Okay, so some stranger offers this guy, who's an ambassador, a drink that he pulled out of his jacket pocket. He doesn't ask any questions. I'm not sure if Nazda Ravoni is a real word or not. Once again, Russian fans tell me in the comments. Okay, here's the fun part. He is going to the bathroom to throw up, so we're going to go knock him out and take his identity. Hello, Sarah. Now, I remember when I was a kid, and I'd go to the bathroom, and my mom would send me in there to wash my face because I was throwing up, right? So, one punch to the shoulder should do it. And because no one is ever going to check in there again. Okay. Now, funny thing is, we're wearing the ambassador's clothes, but so is he, so that face maker is a pretty advanced piece of hardware. We'll go ahead and get our blowpipe out. So now, Schofield is going to be standing over here, and we can talk to her. You can't talk to her when you're Ethan. Ethan won't talk to her. So now she's running in there excited because she thinks she's going to kill us. But we're not going to have any of that. Here's a funny little cutscene here. Now I don't know what happens if you let her get over here, but we're about to find out. She figured it out. Great. Now we're dead. Wonderful. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. My own hubris has destroyed me. Um, and that and the collision detection in this game. 
So uh, I completely messed that up, but that's okay. I'm back. Um, we're going to show you this again. If I die here again, we'll do another cut to me successfully defeating the killer. Except where has she gone? Oh dear. I hope that she has not despawned. That could be a problem. There she is. It seems like she's going... Oh, she's looking at this painting here. Okay. So yes, as I learned the hard way, she will figure out what's going on and kill you. Um, I'm not really sure what the developers were trying to say like with this character. Obviously, if she understands how the face maker works, she knows about Ethan. Okay, you saw that. I shot her dead on, didn't do anything, so I just punched her before she got me. Fortunately, like I said, this is a one-hit kill level, so even punching her works. And it must be quite a hard punch because she never troubles you for the rest of the game, so we just assume that she's dead. That uh, Ethan broke her nose, nose bone went right into her brain. And she is dead as a doornail. So, there's that. Anyway, now we are the ambassador. Uh, the world is our oyster. We can go around and be goofy if we want, but I'd rather just complete the mission. This guy will salute you now, which is a nice effect. He will try to get you to leave, and if you don't, he will arrest you. Now, there's one smoke generator we had to place as the ambassador. Now, here's the stupid thing. This door leads to the place you are ultimately going to. And as you can see, there's no key card reader on this door. There is no... There's no nothing. But the menu says that you don't have clearance because you're not really the ambassador. So you have to take the long way around. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But such as Mission Impossible 64. I mean, I mean, my goodness, even if the door is locked, couldn't the guy just, like, knock? I mean, good grief. Even Bellaboo thinks that's stupid. She's over there woofing at something. I don't know what. There's just this vaguely Russian-looking statue here. I think they, the Russian embassy must buy its art at the same place as the guy who decorated Castlevania from Castlevania 64. Statue looks very similar. And that is that. As you can see, I take damage fairly quickly and I can also knock myself down like that. 